thank you so much. 17 newsmakers this morning. Autism rates tripled among children in the New York and New Jersey metropolitan areas from 2000 to 2016, according to a new study published in the journal Pediatrics. Nationally, the rise has been similar, according to the CDC. So the question is, are doctors just getting better at diagnosing autism or are rates actually on the rise? So joining us this morning, Dr. Namisha Amin, a local pediatrician, to address that big question. Dr. Amin, thanks for coming in. Of course. So which do you think it is? Is it a little of both? I think it's absolutely a little bit of both. What was once sort of a vague, not very well understood condition is something that I think virtually every pediatrician is screening every child in their office for at multiple well visits throughout their childhood. So there's definitely sort of an increased awareness and understanding of the condition. We've also broadened the definition of who in is involved within the autism spectrum disorder. We have better diagnostic criteria and we have more reporting on the behalf of pediatricians and other healthcare professionals. On the other side though, experts say that that better diagnosing does not fully explain this trend, right? There are some other factors at play and maybe some rising rates. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely. There are a variety of genetic and environmental factors that absolutely come into autism, come into play with autism. And some of which we understand really well and some of which really remain to be determined. So what are some of those factors? Environmental, uh, things that moms may do while pregnant? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think from a genetic standpoint, it's important to know that there are genetic variations like within our genes that can increase the risk of autism. Um, there are certain genetic syndromes like Down syndrome syndrome that can also increase the risk of autism. We know that boys are four times as likely to be diagnosed with autism, as well as the fact that autism can cluster in families. So oftentimes if one child has autism, it's not surprising if a sibling develops it as well. In terms of the environmental factors, I think everything under the sun has virtually been studied to see if it is linked to autism. And some of the more recent um, discoveries are that things like advanced paternal age, or I should say advanced parental age, both mothers and fathers, as well as birth trauma have shown, have shown a strong association with the development of autism. There are certain things that are definitely worth investigating um, because we've seen a strong association, mm -hmm. such as maternal obesity, maternal diabetes, oh even being born by cesarean section. Very and then, of course, there are things like dietary modifications and medications that have now been under um, recent scrutiny as well. I mean, I think everyone has probably heard the commercial recently about yes. a, a lawsuit involving acetaminophen um, and if mom's taking it while pregnant um, and the risk of developing autism. It, do you think there's a link there? Is it worth moms, pregnant moms, avoiding painkillers? Well, there's been multiple studies now that have shown an association between using Tylenol or acetaminophen in pregnancy and the development of autism in that child. But it's an association and causality between two very common things like autism and taking Tylenol during pregnancy is really difficult to establish. But we do know based on these studies that it seems that more chronic use, higher doses, more frequent administration of acetaminophen does seem to pose a stronger risk for autism as opposed to more sporadic use. And so I think that it's important for pregnant women to be aware of this and to be able to make their own decisions based on that. Um, certainly using it if absolutely needed, but if it's sort of a minor ache and pain that can be alleviated in a different fashion, then pregnant women may wanna consider that as well. What about, speaking of environmental factors, what about air quality? I think we've heard some in the past, some some mention of perhaps a link there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is something, again, still under investigation, okay. really nothing hard and fast that we know that definitely this particular agent in the air is giving rise to more autism. Okay, so what should you do? What signs should you watch for in your children? Mm -hmm. I think first and foremost, you will see a delay in communication or language skills as well as social skills. You may see some repetitive behavioral movements such as hand flapping, head banging. Um, some autistic toddlers tend to like to line toys up in a very specific manner. Um, they tend to have a limited range of what they enjoy doing. They don't 
necessarily want to try 10,000 different things, but they have a few set activities that they're comfortable with. You may even see some sensory issues when it comes to touch or loud noises or even textures of food. Um, and you know, I'm, if you're a first time parent, you, you don't know what's really normal. You're always right. going like, is my child okay? I mean, I can't mm -hmm. count the number of times I've asked myself that question. So by what age do we notice those communication delays? Are there a certain a number of words they should be able to communicate by a certain age mm -hmm. that is a good indicator? Oftentimes with autism, we will see babies develop normally till roughly the one year mark. Okay. And then we start to see a little bit of regression. And so oftentimes parents may not necessarily be able to articulate it, but they'll just say that something seems different. Okay. You know, that they had one or two words, but now they're not using those words. They used to, you know, look me in the eye when I spoke, but now it seems like there's just not as much of a connection there. Okay. And I think it's really important whether you have 14 concerns about autism or even just one abnormal behavior that has caught the sight of your eye to talk to your pediatrician because you're with your child all the time. Mm -hmm. So you really know their ins and outs and expressing those concerns to your pediatrician can then get investigation and potentially an earlier diagnosis underway. And and why is that early diagnosis and intervention important? What can that do? Well, just like many other conditions, early diagnosis leads to early intervention, which can then lead to better outcomes. We have a very specific type of therapy for autism called applied behavioral analysis or ABA therapy. And we have seen time and time again that this helps children with autism improve in their communication skills, social skills, adaptive skills. And so it makes it easier for them as they become toddlers and children to go to school school, to do their activities of daily living, and then ultimately just become more well-adjusted, happier adults. All right, some great information. Thank you so much for coming in this morning, Dr. Me. We appreciate you me. as always. We'll be right back to this.